You asked for more Rayman content, so you're gonna get it. Now I realized that a lot of people seemed interested in speedrunning the game. So I thought, why not make a video where I teach you how to actually get good results with this useless skill in a game that is god knows how many years old. And I will, but the first thing to mention is that we are speedrunning Rayman 3 HD. And that is really important. The PS3 HD remaster is the only Rayman 3 copy that I currently own, so of course my mind is totally set on that game. But why mention this? Well, because speedrunning the old Rayman 3 and the HD remaster is a totally different experience. In the old versions there are so many things to abuse, like mega jumps, extra ledges and sometimes out of the map glitches. Most subscribers of me will know this, but if you're new, welcome, my name is David. But I won't be using major glitches in any game. I frankly think that is kind of lame. If I randomly find little quirks, Yes, I will use them to my advantage, but you'll almost never see me dissect games into totally different experiences. Some of you might not like that, but my counter argument is always, is the way I currently play not different enough? Anyway, well, that's all for a different video. I am here today to make you a pro speedrunner, and I will show you moves that can shave off plenty of time off your runs. Starting in the Fairy Council, the first objective is to obtain our hands. There's only platforming, so that gives us a little time to talk about the first general tip. Nothing else is important other than reaching the end. And you can even see that in how I play. I don't use the helicopter to get from mushroom to mushroom. And in corners I will always stick to the shortest path possible. Now be aware that runs are never going to be perfect. And there will always be plenty of spots where you see me struggle. But I am still learning as well. My current record is 2 hours. 34 minutes and 31 seconds. And this is after many runs. My dream has always been to get a sub 230 run, but that hasn't happened yet. But to shave off 4 minutes and 31 seconds off my personal best, that's gonna be tough. So we have to find little things to save time. Like here, we spam this button to go up, but once you reach a certain height, you are able to jump and reach the platform you're getting onto. No need to stand on this lift for any longer. Now after this room we get to our first major roadblock. Damage boosts. We let the hoodlum live and we jump against the wall. I have plenty of runs that just end right here. Because you can do this in one or two jumps. But sometimes you get unlucky or you don't realize that your position is slightly off. And it can take way longer. The idea is to jump and to let the hoodlum shoot his shot in the air. And when the bullet is near you, you jump. You take damage mid-air, but that makes sure that you get an extra jump and you can reach the platform you would otherwise never be able to reach. It does take practice, so to make sure you're on the right spot, do a few scouting runs. But what also shaves off a few seconds is the roll strategy. Once you've completed this game enough, you know where certain placements are. For example, here, after the Yahoo! Ha 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 part, you can see me roll right before the cutscene plays. Rayman jumps to the exact spot where the cutscene is triggered, saving you a few extra frames. It also works when rolling off a platform, if you need to go down anyways. The second part of the roll is a lot slower than the first part. So if we roll off platforms, we take advantage of the first part. So do this enough and this will add up. Now it seems little, and it is. But consider how much I'm running and how many small cutscenes are playing. It's the best I can do. I have one tip that will blow your mind in the TNC Highway. Don't fall off. That's it. Moving on, clearly forest. There are some pretty good speedrun parts here. I should mention that you can totally run past this enemy, so don't waste your time on him. Furthermore, I have found that when attacking, the best way to do that is to always throw a curved punch. Why? Well, because if you attack an enemy face to face, sometimes he runs away while you throw your fist and you must charge another one. This takes time, Time we don't have. When throwing a curve punch, the hoodlum can run away, but the fist will follow him until he hits him nonetheless. So it's a little safer to use this way. Anyway, in my world record attempt video, I found out that you can damage boost onto the ledge with the red power up, but I wouldn't recommend that right here. It's really inconsistent and can sometimes take minutes. It's way safer to just do it the normal way and focus on where the enemies are going to come from. If you anticipate that correct, you can save a few seconds. 
I mean, you could always try the damage boost and reset your run every time you get unlucky, but good luck with that, that seems lame. And even if that would work, that would only shave off, what, like 10 seconds or so. So I think that's not worth the amount of resets that you're gonna have. Now it's time for a strategy that will change the entire speedrun community for gaming in general. When gliding down to the teensy, you want to land in the spot that I'm landing in right now. Throw your punch and roll forward to end up exactly in this position. Why? Well, a small cutscene place where the teensy drops the first blue power-up of the run. And if you stand in a spot where the blue power-up will spawn, the cutscene of obtaining the logjaw is triggered instantly. If you are positioned somewhere else, you cannot move for about one and a half to two seconds. So landing here is a quick and easy two second save, if you know how to do it. Next up there are a few parts where we have to take out a couple of enemies. In these speedruns it's good to know which ones you have to kill and which ones not. You don't want to waste your time on them. For example, you have to kill all of zero enemies here. At the gate there are a few enemies I'd suggest that you do kill. You could do a damage boost here, but I only recently pulled that off for the first time. Currently have done it twice or something. It's kinda hard. Taking out the enemies doesn't even take long. Maybe you lose about two and a half seconds. So it's way more consistent. And that's what we want. We want consistency in these runs. In fact, after these, one more will spawn, but when he runs towards his position, you start charging a punch and voila, it takes almost no time. And speaking of no time, there's a lot to do after the gate. But not for us. We simply stand here and with a good jump we can make it to this platform and skip this part entirely. Now let's talk about Hoot Stomper. There's a lot of RNG in this fight. And that's all coming from which plates will randomly activate. If you are lucky, you will always get the same two plates to activate. Preferably to the south, because that's where you enter the arena. And it doesn't take you extra time to get to the other side. I wouldn't count on it however, since there are many more plates that could activate. When Hootstomper is defeated, we take control over him. We make sure we walk in circles and jump a lot. This guarantees you the most and fastest kills. Alright, Bug of Merc time! We immediately jump into the swamp to get to the witch as fast as possible. The strategy with her is to anticipate her moves. It's harder than it looks though, so sometimes you will fail and she will use the attack where she is invulnerable and you have to jump over her. It's not the end of the world, but still unfortunate and you should definitely try to do this. If she's about to turn from a frog back into a human, jump and throw another splash of soup onto her. If your timing is perfect, she will turn into a frog immediately again. This saves you a lot of time and you should really experiment with that. The next part is interesting. Kill the hoodlum with the dollar sign, throw the bomber in the swamp, Make your way to the red one-hit KO hoodlums, take the blue can and jump past the fatty to reach this platform. This can all be done in no time and it's really effective and consistent strategy. And speaking of, we make our way into the battle against Razov. The way to do the most damage on him the fastest is to manipulate his spawn. When you go to the right, sprint in this hallway five times and run back. You will almost always spawn in the foyer again. But make sure to have your fist already charged and throw a curved punch. Also try to hit him a second time while he tries to run away. It's not too uncommon to get this second hit in and it just saves you time by adding up damage. Now I should mention that although fast, you cannot beat him entirely with this strat. When he's down to only a few lives, you must enter three rooms where he will snipe you. I'm not sure, but I believe the game was programmed so that you have to have at least three snipe sections before Razov is able to spawn in a room where you can finish him off. But also there, there are few spots where if you hide in a perfect position, Razov will shoot his bullets way faster. If you just run in the open, he will slowly start to zoom in on you, which takes some time. So find the perfect position when he is sniping you, and this could only take a few seconds. Land of the Livid Dad time. At spawn, you can instantly jump and throw a punch to break the TNC cage hanging here. That is way faster than if you have to jump on the stones. Just keep running through the cave and do the normal thing, but fast. I should mention that kicking or punching the plum is faster, so you should definitely do that. 
Although, if you look at my gameplay you can see that I kicked it way too far in the right direction. That cost me seconds. There are no real skips in this part to be honest, only small things. For example, stand on the plum juice barrel and once Globox picks it up, it will give you a brief moment where you can stand on him. If done perfectly, this will make sure you jump to the stairs without having to wait for Globox to complete his drunk animation, also shaving a few seconds off. There's also no complex strategy here, but still one thing to mention. When you defeated all snipers, make sure to be positioned right here, because it may not look like it, but gameplay continues with this cutscene. If you are fast, you can definitely defeat this enemy in no time. The shoe part is always tricky to me, since he can randomly change direction, but it's okay, it's not so bad. I think we all practiced this when we are kids way before, so I believe that we can do it right now as well. I'd also recommend not to take out these hoodlums, because then you have to recharge your fist, which not only takes time, but you risk the fact that it's very much possible that you run out of red power-up time. That means having to run back to get it. And well, time is of the utmost importance. While I do the damage boost thing at the alarm, let me take a moment to see where we're at. We're at 47 minutes right now. That is really on pace with my record. Damn it, the balloon got shot, but yeah, this could very well be the run. However, no way are we in the clear, since pretty precise parts are coming up. For example, when breaking the teensy cage here, make sure to stand exactly in this position. It's best if you're already here and you not still have to find it when the red power-up spawns. With that you can easily make your way back to this place and skip everything by jumping on this piggyback. Now I really want to show you this strategy, it's great. Stand in approximately this area. You still have a line of sight on the button. You throw a curved punch and when you do, quickly jump on one of these and jump again. This makes sure Rayman can reach the top of this platform and that is way faster than when you would have to jump on each and every one of these platforms. Remember that when the tower has changed, only this enemy has to die to continue. So we don't even bother with the rest. Now in this place my cousin said that he was once able to boost with the blue power up so high that he was able to get to the next level from the lockjaw. If we can do that consistently, that would be an easy 8 to 10 second time save. But I've tried again and again off camera, but I don't know how he did it. Maybe it has something to do with falling first and at the exact last moment we reach the lock jaw and it boosts us up higher. But we want consistency in these runs instead of experimenting and possibly throwing the run away. We cannot recreate it exactly, so this is just a theory strat, and to my knowledge cannot be implemented for consistent runs. Now you must think that we cannot shave some time off the octopus fight, since his attacks are a consistent length. But I'm happy to disappoint you, you can actually do it. See the exit is all the way there, it takes way too much time if we would swim there after he is defeated. So we do the usual thing, and when he does the laser attacks, I swim towards the exit. This way, when he is defeated, I can leave this place as quickly as I can. Hell yeah! And we made it to the desert of the Knaren in 1 hour 5 minutes. The first part is basically played as normal. The only thing to mention is that when this Knar comes to you, make this jump. That will be the shortest route. In the cough syrup part there are 3 things to mention. At the end of this tunnel a cutscene will play that stops Rayman for about 1.5 seconds or so. So we jump over the trigger point. And this nonsense down below is absolutely unnecessary since we can make the jump from this wall on the platform here, skipping that part entirely. The next skip is right here and this is a really difficult one. I fail here one time too. You can skip one level here. You have to jump just right but you really can make it, shaving another couple of seconds off your time. See, I keep telling you to shave seconds off, but if you keep shaving little time off, eventually that will become a lot of time. All these tricks add up, and eventually the time will get as low as it can possibly be. We entered the desert of the Knaren with 1 hour and 5 minutes, so that's conclusive proof that these strategies tend to work. Like right here, we don't even have to shoot the rocket, we can just make this jump. 
Now I totally messed up the reflux fight in my attempt here. Pure fight time? It took me 4 minutes and 23 seconds. And that is excluding the unskippable cutscene before and after the fight. That's terrible. So let me tell you how I can hypothetically beat Reflux fast. Because doing it in one minute is surely possible. When Reflux does the spin attack, immediately bump into him. Yes, you receive damage, but he will stop doing this attack and do the attack where he is vulnerable and you can damage him. Be aware that after doing this a while, your lives obviously get low and you don't want to be game over. Not only do you have to retry the fight, but you also have to replay the unskippable cutscene. If you were to go game over, just reset the run, it's not worth it. Anyway, the mistake I make here is obvious. I don't manipulate Reflux's position enough. And to beat him fast, that's the start. Because think about it, the attacks that take the longest are the ones where he is going to stand in the middle and does the ground attacks where you have to jump. During this time you cannot hit him whatsoever. So, if we can make sure he never gets to the middle, he can never do this attack. It has something to do with your position, because when doing the spin attack, Reflex will follow you. So you actually have a say in where he will stand. Just keep him on the sides, block off the middle, and you should be fine. But upon watching back the footage, I can immediately see what went wrong. In the beginning of the battle, I worry too much about losing too many lives. So I jump to the side to refill some. Yes, more lives is great, but you actually don't want to do this. Not only can you now not manipulate his spawn anymore, but if you are doing this when he does the stationary attack, where you have to jump, you cannot be here. The attack will continue for the rest of time, until you have spent a certain amount of time on the platform with him. So new life's great, but now you lose so much time. However, we had a pretty good run so far, so 4 minutes 23 seconds. Yeah, it's a mistake, but no need to reset the run yet. Mistakes are going to happen in speedruns, especially at my skill level. I'm no professional, I just love this game a lot. At this place we can make a pretty funny skip. We just ignore the enemies here and run towards the barricade. Stand in the middle and wait until they throw their bombs onto you. You jump and when the bombs are below you, you can damage boost onto the crates, saving you a minute or so. The enemy after these crates will not even work until the bombers have been taken out, so we can just run through this guy. The longest shortcut is basically played as normal, although I want to shine light on my usual route, which I believe to be the fastest. Watch this. When making it here, we roll into the cutscene and we're first gonna do the part on the right. When jumping back, use the helicopter to take these crowns and climb back up to do this part. Once you have collected the crowns, don't climb, just run back out. That's way faster. You can then do this part and that positions you right by the exit, which is great. I usually make this jump during the cutscene where the door opens, so you have about a meter extra, but after the cutscene the game unfortunately puts you back onto the button. Now I failed a speedrun battle against my cousin at the Summit Beyond the Clouds once, because I thought I was being smart and skipped these twin droids. See, we can first take out the hoodlums before they have landed and when they are still in the air they are an easy one hit KO to enemies that would otherwise be very strong. But I thought I was being smart by just skipping the twins and go up. However, the red power up does not spawn and you cannot open this door. So the twins have to be killed. It's not hard and doesn't take really long, just keep in mind that you have to kill them. It's devastating when it's neck to neck in a speedrun race and you lose because you thought you were outsmarting your opponent but you actually lose a lot of time. The entire part with the tower is unnecessary since we can glide here, wait for the bombs to land and damage boost onto this platform to save about 3 to 4 minutes instantly. Quick mention is that we don't have to kill the sorcerer protecting his red enemy. Just hit the sorcerer once and during his hit animation punch the enemy and the path is cleared for you. Okay, so time for the Hootlam headquarters. I really should mention this room. The game wants me to go left and do the whole extra room, which takes a lot of time. Instead of that nonsense, we are going to stand on this crate, jump and throw a curved punch onto the sorcerer. It's kind of hard and precise work, so I recommend you practice with that first. Because curved punches left don't work, 
you have to hit him on the right side because if hit on the left side your punch will hit the wooden structure where he stands on. He is a 5 hit KO but this won't be a first try victory and it's gonna take a while. It's really not uncommon to have to jump a few extra times but if you have practiced enough you can do this way faster. When jumping throw a punch on the fatty then turn to the left strafe mid air and throw a curved punch to the right to hit him is what I usually do. So yes it will take some time but it's still way faster than having to do the entire extra room. One more thing to mention is this room where the orange rocket is. On the platform above me there is a hoodlum which is protected by a sorcerer and he needs to die to spawn a red power up. But taking out the sorcerer takes way too much time with him despawning all the time. So when we get the orange rocket we take him out with the rocket for a quick and easy one hit KO to save another few seconds. Now every speedrun is bound to have RNG and in this place you can get really unlucky. My cousin and I call this woman RNG. You have to shoot the Rayman or the Glowbox targets. But when breaking a target which display a woman, the health level replenishes. Not only this, but the amount of women you get can make you lose time and it's entirely RNG. Per woman, it's about a 2 second time loss which is not in your control. My record is 7 women straight. That was really unlucky. My record of women in total is 15 I believe. Usually you get about 4 to 6 which is about average. And this really sucks because when you get a lot of women you just keep staring at your screen and be like damn it, damn it, damn it, there oh, oh there he was, N no, damn it. Yeah. In this room we can make this jump to save about 2 minutes or so. Just make sure not to bump your head on the ceiling. Now one room I have to talk about is the fight against a horrible machine. Because you guys helped me to do this way better. In my minimum attacks run I made a big mistake by saying that you need small attacks. I got a lot of comments of people saying that I have to charge my attacks. So I started to experiment and did this fight over and over and over and over. And you know what? You guys were absolutely right. And this is great in every way. For every run, challenge run, speed run, etc. It's way faster, so thank you. And with that, we've made it to the last level of the game. And if you've been on my channel, you know we're going to make this easy jump and skip this arena part entirely. That saves you about 11 to 13 minutes or so. But what also saves a few seconds is how you approach this room. Here, jump on this platform and from here you can grab the blue target and jump here. Keep going and when hanging here, you can already reach for the blue target, saving you another second or two. So this level, which takes a lot of time to complete, can easily be done in no time. For me, in this attempt, it was 1 minute and 33 seconds, which is not even really good since I failed a jump a few times. I think my average is about 1 minute and 29 seconds. And speaking of jumps, in this room we can shave some time off by waiting here a bit and making this jump. That way we don't have to make an extra turn all around the tower. And you know what? That's all I really have to say about the Tower of Leptis. I mean, you can shave a few seconds off by not jumping on the ladder and immediately go for the balloon. And at the flying machine part you have to maneuver through the level carefully, but never actually stop boosting your turbo. However, and this is important, you have to stop at this point, otherwise you get clocked as I call it. And that means the spikes will crush you and it's an easy one hit KO onto you. And when you are game over, you have to redo everything again, including the shooting parts. I once had a massive speedrun race lead on my brother and cousin, but in the end I got clocked, making me do this part over entirely. I did still win, but only by about a 20 second lead after that. It was a real close run. Now my final advice is in the last phase of the ending boss. Especially in the gosh part. Reflux will spawn hoodlums who walk towards him. For every hoodlum that reaches his mark, he will refill small amount of lives. So we want to kill as much as possible. Usually we have to do 3 runs of this. But when done perfectly, it can be done in two. I am really bad at this and I usually get three, but the point is that you can do it. 
you have to target groups. Don't wait long to fire, but you should also not fire instantly, since that makes sure that you won't have a bomb ready at the perfect time. If you practice this enough, you can definitely make it in two runs instead of three, saving you about two and a half to three minutes or so. And that means that we have finished this run. There were a lot of mistakes here or there, but they will always exist. I am a firm believer that the perfect run cannot be completed by a human. So yeah, part of getting the time as low as it can possibly be is always going to be how fast can you adapt and fix random things that happen. To quickly recap, my previous record is 2 hours, 34 minutes and 31 seconds. I always wanted to get a sub 2.5 hour run. And now this run was... 2 hours, 28 minutes and 45 seconds. I did it! Hell yeah, let's go! This also leads me to believe that a sub 220 run could be possible in the HD remaster. I mean, with a perfect reflex fight you can shave at least 2 minutes off, maybe more. Furthermore, there were a few parts where I found the mistakes I made too big, resulting into much time loss. The witch can also be done in about a minute faster if you manipulate her attacks more than I did. So with all of that, maybe if I keep trying and train even more, I will get that sub 220 run. Now I'm sure that a lot of people that are watching this and in the end you are thinking, hey, you didn't use this strategy. Please comment and let me know how you tackle certain levels. Let's all learn from our experience and get the time as low as possible. But I'm also interested to hear about your experience and stories about your Rayman runs. So please tell me those as well, I'd love to hear them. This has been yet another obscure video game run, so until next time I'd say, take care. <laughs>